And welcome back to another Gutter Fighting Secrets Tactical Podcast. Today we are joined by Sam. Now, Sam is a French foreign legionnaire. This is some cool shit, guys. Actually, it's really serendipitous what happened. Uh, I am actually currently in France, and the day that I landed, Sam got in touch with me on Instagram, and we were chatting a little bit. He says, oh yeah, I'm a French foreign legionnaire. I said, what the? I happen to be in Paris at the moment. Uh, this is too serendipitous to ignore. Let's sit down. Let's get you on the Tactical Podcast, because I know I've had a bunch of guys before tell me, Will, we want to know more about what the French Foreign Legion is all about. How do you join? What's it like? What's life like inside it? So I said, Sam, come on and let's do this. Um, so I want to welcome on Sam to the Gutter Fighting Secrets Tactical Podcast. Bro, thank you so much for coming on and talking to us a little bit about Legionnaire life. Hey, man. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. So, Sam, you were telling me a little bit before that um, you were in the U.S. service before, and I don't know if we can say exactly what you did in the U.S. service or not. Uh, let's uh, let's keep that. No, let's keep that. Um... Yeah. So uh, we were we were talking and you were in the U.S. service and we'll leave it at that. And um, now you have joined the French Foreign Legion and you've been in the Legion for a little bit now. And I'm going to keep things as big as possible intentionally here as the viewers are all aware. Sometimes when we sit down with guys, we have to be vague. So uh, that's just the way it's going to be, guys. But Sam's been in here in the Legion for a little bit of time now. Um, unfortunately, well, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. We could go into it, but we won't. Um, so Sam, bro, all right, let's get down to brass freaking tags here, man. Um, tell us a little bit of background about yourself, anything that you can before we get right into the questions about, you know, life in the Legion and all of that. Sure. So, yeah, I was in the service for six years. Um, unfortunately, my time in the service wasn't, uh, was a little rough. Mm. Uh, and so I made a few problems. And so mm. uh, I finished my contract, but I was not allowed to re-enlist. Mm. So otherwise I would have still be in the U.S. military. So I got out. Uh, I was civil for a little bit, but um, obviously civilian life wasn't very appealing to me uh, because I joined the military at 18. So when I joined, you know, the military was all I knew. Uh, so I got out anyways, and I was civil for a few years, and I was civilian for a few years, excuse me. And I was just looking for something else appealing, and I, had, I was talking to a friend. And he was like, man, you should join the French Foreign Legion. And I had always heard about the French Foreign Legion. I'm a big uh, history buff. I like history. So I knew about it. I, I just knew a vague part about it. So I looked into it and I was like, you know what? This looks like I could do it. So I trained. I trained a little bit. I trained for a few months and I bought a one-way ticket to France and joined the French Foreign Legion. Oh, shit. Bro, that's yeah, so bad that's crazy. Yeah. So I was looking on the French Foreign Legion's website. Actually, I don't think it was their website. I don't know if they have a website. They have a website. They have one. They have one. So it might have been the actual uh, Legion site that I was on, but it was um, it was saying a couple of things about joining, and I'll kind of list off what I read, and then you can kind of take it from there. So, I mean, yeah. this is just such a cool thing, man. Um, number one, you can join uh, until you're, I think, 39, 39 and a half. Um, you yes. have to go to Paris to join. You can't call them. You can't freaking, you know, go to a recruiting station in Chicago. You have to go to Paris, bring your birth certificate, your passport. Once you go there, um, there should be an office or the office that's open 24-7, 365. Now, once you go there, if the legionnaire on duty, that should be on duty 24-7, again, 365, um, if he decides to allow you in or allow you to start testing, the testing process is something like two weeks. They give you food, they give you shelter, um, they give you clothing for that two weeks. And if at the end of that two weeks, they decide, you know, you're good or you're out. And, and is that basically kind of how, how it happens? All right, man. So, okay. Yes and no. So like, there is no recruiting process. That is correct. You can't call. There is no phone number. Uh, you literally have to show up. Uh, there is re there is a uh, regiment or it's a fort. It's basically a fort. It's, it's called a fort because 
back in the day, France had a lot of forts. That's how they were. That's how they run the war. But anyways, it's a fort outside of Paris. It's called Fort Nogent. And then there's also another place in Aubonne. It's in South France next to Marseille. Those are the two places. So you literally go there. You show up. Uh, you need your passport, yes. You don't need your birth certificate, but we'll get into that later. You actually do need your birth uh, certificate to get your real identity back. So you go there with your passport, um, with a bag of just like, you know, some, some shoes, like some change of clothes, some toiletries. And yeah, you go up to the gate. You're like, yeah, I'm here to join the Legion. Um, and they immediately take you in. Uh, they take your passport right away. Um, they keep you and yeah, you automatically, you get a, like a, a 10 new sport, like a sport, uh, some sport clothing, you put it on and that's what you'll wear during your time, uh, during the tests. And, uh, yeah, they immediately feed you. There's a place to stay. You stay in like these rooms. There's a lot of bunk beds because there's a lot of guys that are constantly joining. So you're immediately with a bunch of other guys from all over the world, like different nationalities. There's a lot of guys that don't speak English. You know, like, so yeah, anyways, you'll find your, you'll find your click. Like there's always guys who speak English. So right away, um, you stick th with the guys that speak the same language. Um, and yeah, the test start, you do a uh, psychological test right away. Like you have a few psycho psychological tests, IQ tests, but you do one like right away to see where you're at. I've seen people fail like right off the bat. Like they literally get there and like, they fail like the first one. And then that, that's it. That's it. They can join again, maybe in six months. But once you fail, like, you know, you, you're, you're out. And then they might give you a letter saying you can come again in six months. But either way. Uh, and then, you, yeah, you do physical tests. And, yeah, it takes around two weeks. The process takes around uh, two weeks to, to get accepted, as we'll say. Now, once you've uh, been accepted, and I want to put a brief caveat in here from what I understand. Um, the only stipulation is that you're not wanted by Interpol, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely right. Um, they'll, they'll check your passport and see if you're wanted. And like Interpol is international. So like, that's a big, uh, big time, um, crime. Like you have to be like a pretty big time criminal for you to be on Interpol wanted for, I don't know, gun trafficking or drug trafficking, human trafficking, like murder or something, you know? Because there are a lot of uh, guys who join the Legion for a second chance. Yeah, there's a lot of guys who join. They understand the Legion was uh, a lot I, I, when the Legion started. A lot, like I, I don't know the percentage, but more than fifty percent of the Legionnaires they were criminals. They were they were criminals. So they understand that people are are not perfect, and a lot of these guys you know that they'll do petty petty thefts, petty crimes like that, and they'll be accepted. Now, there's an old movie uh, from the 90s with Jean-Claude Van Damme called The Legion. <laughs> and yeah. I'm, sure, yeah, I'm sure you know it, man. For those of you guys out there who haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Awesome movie. He was a boxer. and he Yes, exactly. Thing. Yeah, and so he runs and he, he has to join the Legion. Like, he's just running away from the police. He finds the Legion Hall. He goes in. They accept him. And now he says, he says now you're a Legionnaire. And he, he goes off to, like, Africa or something. So... But yeah, that, yeah. that the <laughs> of the Legion is that you're saying that's basically still kind of how it is. That's pretty realistic, man. So when you join, they change your identity wow. and they shred like when you join, they shred your bank cards, uh, any form of ID except your passport. They wow. keep your passport. You will not see that passport until you get your real identity back. Um, but anyway, so we'll say like they change your identity. They change your mother's name, your father's name. They give you a complete new identity. They'll give you a military ID, a Legion ID. Well, it's, uh, it's the French army. It's under the directory of the French army um, with your identity. They'll give you your uh, debit card because you get paid with your fake identity. And then there's, if you're not like hiding, if you, if you have nothing to hide, if you want your real identity back, if you want your passport back, because without your passport, you can't travel. But so if you want your real identity back, there is a process where you can get it back after you get after you complete your training and you get to your real regiment, you can get it back. But, yeah, uh, if you're if you're wanted, if you want to keep that new identity, you keep it um, after you spend your time in the Legion. You can choose to keep that identity, but it takes that takes a long process. 
Um, but yeah, like you back in the day, not, not anymore, but back in the day when there was a lot of fighting in Africa, like that's straight up how it would happen. Uh, you would get your identity and like get straight off, you know, do your training and get sent straight off to one of the colonial wars in Africa or uh, in the Middle East, wherever they needed you, honestly. And uh, Paris, or I'm sorry, France was a big empire back in the day. They had uh, colony kind of everywhere, you know, Thailand, yes. Vietnam, even to, to bring it more modern, but Africa, Middle East. And um, that's, you know, that's why maybe we'll get into this. Maybe we won't. But that's why there's a lot of Algerians and people like that, I think, still in France. But that's uh, correct. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that is just an interesting thing. And we were talking about that on the live stream last night, actually, about how, you know, France started to contract and they kind of started to lose a little bit of their uh, sway throughout the world. And it's just interesting how empires rise and contract and then <laughs> rise again. But uh, so. A little bit more here about when you become a legionnaire, you finished your training, um, and mm -hmm. maybe even you finished your time in the regiment, you will actually get a new French passport with a new identity, if that's correct. Okay, so um, you will get your French passport if you apply. You, it's not guaranteed. There's no guarantee, and it, that takes uh, quite a bit of time. Huh. Just to get that, just to throw that out there. Uh, it's not like you will do uh, the, the contract is five years after your five years, you will not get a French passport. You have to apply for that and you can apply for that at your fourth year of learning. Okay. Okay. That takes, that's kind of, that's kind of a process. Okay. It takes some time. Um, I have known people to get it if they want it, because you have to understand, uh, there's a lot of guys who join the Legion, uh, for the passport. Unfortunately, they're not joining the Legion to, to fight. Uh, it is what it is. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm telling the truth. A lot of these guys, they come from, you know, real poor countries and, and they can't live there. Like the, the life is shit uh, and they, they need to go to the, the Legion so they can get that French passport. They, be, they can become a French citizen and live in France where life is a lot better, obviously. So, you know, France, first world country. That being said, a lot of the Anglophones, like uh, as far as Americans or even Western Europeans, they don't need uh, the Legion for a French passport. So we're coming here for different reasons. And if we talk more about that, you know, that's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, problems with that, actually, with the guys that that come here just for the passport. But anyways, mm. yeah. So for four years, you can apply. You can get one around your fifth year, Mark. Um if you decide to keep that new identity, it's different. I don't really know how that works. Um, I have not looked into that. I have not asked about that because I don't need it. I have my um, real identity. I have my passport and everything. Um, I, I have actually known one guy who straight up, he was actually American, who straight up did made some real big problems in uh, the United States. And like he kept his uh, uh, real identity and like, he's not even allowed to talk about what he did, like the Legion straight up protecting him. That's like one uh, circumstance I've ever really known in the Legion. Everyone I know, it's not, they're not wanted. So like I said, yeah, you can apply for it. And on top of that, um, and actually one cool thing, if you get wounded in combat, if you get, uh, yeah, if you get wounded in combat, you automatically get, um, it's called spilt blood for France. And that takes time too, but you, uh, you automatically become a French citizen. Wow. Uh, through that, actually. That's very fair, to be honest with you. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's, yeah. The, France is a is an interesting place because, I mean, this is just what I understand, and you can correct me if I'm mistaken here, but so they automatically get French citizens get like a month of vacation every year. Um, everything is taken care of as far as like medical insurance and stuff like that. You, you're, you're covered by the government. Um, it's a very comfortable life from what I understand. Yeah, France, it's yeah, so true. Um, I mean, French culture is, is is really different than American culture from you and I. But yes, they're they're taken care of. You know, healthcare is is really good here. Um, once you get like your your green card is basically a green card. Like you know, you're more, you're taken more of. Like um, you know, like really cheap healthcare. Even if you like get something done, if you're from another country, you come to France to get you know something taken care of. The dentist or some minor surgery. It's a lot cheaper here, actually. But yeah, it's a very comfortable life in France, I, I would have to say. It's, it's a good life. So 
is there a way that you can keep your American identity and have your new French identity as well? Yes, yes, that's uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I uh, have a friend, another American, who is keeping his, um, you know, obviously his uh, American passport, and he wants a French. He wants a dual citizenship. He wants uh, the French passport. Oh, wow. so, so yeah, he's, 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 you could be you could be Sam Smith and Jean Claude as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Exactly. Wow. Um, as a matter of fact, going with a French passport um, to go on missions, you actually need a French passport. So they actually make a French passport for you, but they keep it. Huh. So I actually like if, if you if you go anywhere outside of France to go on any kind of mission, they will make it takes it takes time. Um, the logistics of the Legion will will make your passport. They're obligated like you cannot go on a mission with your with your passport it has to be a french passport um some kind of french uh, order specific with your name um so yeah like they it, but they keep it it's not like you get to keep that passport and obviously once you leave the legion you you won't ever see that unless you've actually applied for french citizenship they'll destroy it uh, but you will have that french passport to go on missions um and that's it as a matter of fact so, yeah, kind of like the uh, the way the U.S. does it a little bit, I think, with, um, you know, they'll give you a government passport and they'll they'll kind of keep that once you're done with it. Right. Something like that. But, you know, when I was I when I was actually in uh, the U.S. military, I did not have my passport. And whenever I went on missions, it was always on orders mm -hmm. like NATO orders, some kind of a some kind of official document. Mm -hmm. And I showed that with my military ID. So let's talk a little bit about learning French here. So you go into your regiment, you start testing. What's the process like as far as learning French? Okay. I understand that they only speak to you in French? And, uh, yes, yeah. So and the recruiting process or the when, when you go to the, your, to the regiment to, to join, they will assign you uh, a guy that speaks your language and they, you, you will be interviewed by him. Uh, they will ask you questions about your life. Um, you know, what did you do? They want to see if you're lying about anything. Mm. Sometimes, you know, it, it depends on the person. It depends on the, it depends on you. It depends on the, uh, the guy that's doing it. They're all legionnaires. These guys are like, but they're, um, they're all higher enlisted guys. So, you know, like these guys are like E7s, E8s on the pay grade that are interviewing you. So they've done their time. And they're I'm going to ask, uh, like, your, yeah, like I said, things about your life, but they're going to ask it to you in your language. Hmm. OK. That being said, when you start the process, everything is in French. So like when you wake up, um, you do work all day. It's not like you sit around. Um, if there's things that need to be done, you'll be working around the, the regiment. Um, and everything's in French. Like, yeah, it's I didn't know any French when I joined the French Foreign Legion. I knew like merci and bonjour, you know, I, I didn't know anything. So it was really hard. Like some guys pick it up French really fast. I did not. Um, but yeah, they start, they, they immediately start speaking French to you. That way you pick it up faster. Like it's, it's sink or float there. Wow. So, yeah. so then all of the training, um, it's all the trainings in French. It's all in French. So you just so, have to, to guess and understand what they're trying to tell you. Yeah. So like once you get accepted, um, you'll spend like another week, uh, there. And once you're actually accepted, like, okay, you know what, you're going to go to basic training, basically. And you'll that, once you get accepted, you'll get your, um, military clothing, you'll get your sack, everything you need for basic training. That takes another week. Um, then you'll get blood tests. Uh, you know, make sure you don't have anything crazy, you know, like any kind of disease or anything like that. Uh, and then, yeah, you get shipped off to basic. Uh, a corporal will, and a sergeant will come get you um, from the regiment in Oban. It's Oban next to Marseille. Uh, they'll come get you with a bus. Um, you put all your stuff on and the bus takes you to the actual basic training regiment. Um, it's not the same regiment. The basic training regiment is in South France, but it's it's like four hours away from Marseille. Hmm. And there you start your, your basic training. Now you've started your basic training. Um, what is this like? And can you compare it at all to <laughs> American basic training? Oh, man. <laughs> okay, so like the thing about the French Foreign Legion is there's no regs like, uh, like uh, across the board. Like there's no, no, no written standards. Uh, 
That's one thing that actually I kind of knew when I was getting into it. And I think I thought I would have liked that, but you know, like we, you actually need those rules and regulations. We'll just say like that. And, and the U S military, you know, I, I, I even used to complain about it, all these regs and rules and everything, but you actually need that because if not, it's just like chaos, but yeah. So you go to basic training, everything, what happens in your basic training entirely depends on the platoon leader and the sergeants who are training you. So you'll have like the platoon leader, which is basically E7, your sergeants, which are um, E5s, and then you'll have corporals there too, which are basically E4s that are running your uh, basic training. You get there, um, and um, the first month you're there, obviously they start speaking French to you, they yell French, you don't understand, you know, you get hit, huh. you, you, that's, that's like a common thing over there, you get smacked on the head punched in the chest nothing like really crazy like you're not going to get like the shit beat out of you okay but you're just gonna, you're gonna you're gonna get smacked around you know it's it's old school um but you just deal with it you know like it's not like they do it out of uh like i don't know it's not like they do it out like out of, because they hate you or anything it's just because it is, it is what it is hmm. that's what we say so come saw in french like it is what it is it's like that so you go the first month you're um there you go to this place called the farm and um, every there's four companies and um, the basic training regiment. Three are the uh, recruit are, are the basic uh, trainees. Three companies are have like the, the trainees or the Nganja volunteers, as we call them. And then everyone has every company has a farm. So you go to the farm. The first month is the farm um, and the farm. Uh, you start, you know, you learn basic military life. Uh, you learn how to march. Um, you get familiar with the FAMAS, that's the uh, French uh, assault rifle, uh, the, the FAMAS. Now we're, we've switched over to the HK416. I don't know if you knew that, but you still you will still learn the FAMAS in basic training. You will learn the FAMAS. You get familiar, familiarized with that. You learn how to shoot, um, tactics, um, you know, like, uh, uh, yeah, just like, you know, military stuff. And you learn French. Ah, yeah, I forget there is when you start learning French as well mm -hmm. at the farm. So when you say you start learning French, are they putting it up on uh, PowerPoints or are they just kind of like speaking to you and, and saying like uh, push-ups uh, and doing that? Or <laughs> So, yeah. All right. So every day at the end of the day, you will go to your French lesson. Mm -hmm. um, and it's usually the platoon leader. And we call it like the chef de section uh, uh, français, the platoon leader. He's the one giving the class because he has the most time in service. Um, sometimes it's actually French, like the platoon leader is French. Uh, sometimes, you know, it, it's, it could be any nationality, you know, but obviously they have 20 years of service. So their French level is very good. You know what I mean? Or maybe it's one of the sergeants that are filling in. And if it's a sergeant, usually he's a francophone, meaning he speaks fluent French. So that being said, you go to your class at the end of the day, um, you have a whiteboard. Uh, sometimes it's done by PowerPoint. Yeah, they have the projector. Um, but you have to understand, not everyone speaks. This is what I didn't understand. Like, I didn't think about it. Like, I, I speak English, but in your, in, your, in your section, in your platoon, not everyone speaks English. So when you do your French course, like, you're, you're learning French and French. They're, they're literally teaching you French and French. Mm -hmm. Imagine how that was so difficult for me. But you understand, like, they can't teach you French and English because not everyone speaks English or they can't teach you French in, in Russian because no one, not everyone speaks Russian or they can't teach you French and Spanish because no one speaks Spanish. So they are literally teaching you French and, and French is ridiculous. Well, I, you know, I think honestly, that's probably the most effective way to, to learn a foreign language, but it, it's gotta be difficult. It was difficult, man. It was, it was difficult. I, I assume it would be, you know, um, I, I learned Arabic a very similar way. However, there at the beginning was, you know, speaking in English. And then the more you learn, the more you transition into air. But I think for you, it was in France, in French. And then just, it, it's got to be fucking overwhelming, to be honest. It's overwhelming. Everything is like, it's happened so fast. Um, and when you're at the farm, they will split you up in groups. There's four in your platoon. You have the entire platoon. They'll split you, they'll split you up in four groups. And yeah. uh, they will split you up from your nationalities because that's a big thing. It's a huge problem is the nationalities that will try to stick together. They will try to speak their own language 
and you will never advance like that. Yeah. So when you sleep in the room, like even like, let's say I see another like uh, Anglophone, this guy, he's from Australia, for example, he's in my group and like, oh, hey, uh, he's like, you know, he's, he, he speaks English, I speak English, you know, all right, let's click. So we'll, we'll sleep, like, I'll sleep next to him. I'll sleep on the, the cot next to him. Like if they see that, they'll immediately split you up. Uh, you won't be able to sleep with, you know, next to someone that like you're friends with. They want to get you like mixed in. Uh, that way you can start speaking French better. Um, if you, if they catch you speaking your own language, you'll get in trouble. You'll, you'll get smoked. You'll get, you'll get, you'll do push-ups. You'll dig a hole. You might get hit. Um, you'll, you'll get, you'll get smoked somehow, man. You'll get hazed. You'll, you'll, you'll get in trouble for speaking your own language. It's, a, it's obviously a big no-no for speak, speak your own language, but that's the whole point. Uh, that's the whole point. Cause you're in the French foreign legion. You must speak French. So it's better for you to uh, start like making friends. If there's any guys who speak French, um, start making friends with them. Start learning French like right off the bat. I promise you it will be way easier in the long run. Way easier. Yeah, that's what I'm picking up here for any guys out there who are interested in thinking about this. Guys, start learning French right away now so that you have an easier time then. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how long, totally, totally. How long is basic training? Mm. So basic training is four months. Wow. Okay. Four months long. So you, you, you do one month at the farm. And like your graduation is called the, or your last test is called the Kepi Blanc March. Now the Kepi Blanc, basically in English, it translates like white, white cap. I don't know if like any of you guys have seen like what the Kepi Blanc lo looks like. It's so goofy. It's like this big white hat uh, with this black bill. Uh, but anyways, um, it's called the Kepi Blanc March. And you must complete the march. And then for your graduation, like your ceremony, you'll get the Kepi Blanc. You, you get it. You put it on your head. Um, you're in your tenue. Um, you're in your like dress uniform, you know. And when you graduate, yeah, you get your Kepi Blanc. And you're basically, you're a legionnaire. That's what it's called. Like, so at the farm, you're in, you're in a ganja volunteer. Like you're like, you know, like a recruit. And then at the end of the farm, you get your Kepi Blanc. And voila, now you're a legionnaire. After the farm, you have three months. You will spend three months at the basic training regiment. You will sleep there in the building. Um, they're, you know, they're like bunk beds or big rooms. You'll stay there. with Like every corporal is assigned a room. So you're spending a lot of time with your corporal and your group. And there you will continue your training. You will continue to learn French. You'll learn um, different. Uh, you'll, you'll learn like, uh, you know, work, to work on the the transmission, like radios, you'll, you'll learn like basic first aid, combat uh, first aid, like all this stuff. Um, as a matter of fact, I forgot to tell you, there's also a place where you'll go in the mountains and you'll do some like training in the mountains. If it's during the snowy season, you will be able to ski um, or you will learn how to ski. There's guys that don't know how to ski. Um, yeah, and that, you'll learn topography, uh, land navigation. You just continue your training. You'll go on marches. You go on a lot of marches. Okay, in the French Foreign Legion, we march a lot hmm. because, unfortunately, like in the in the French Army, like they don't use helicopters a lot. They're like their budget is not like the U.S. military's. So like you get a you go like you get to the the war on, by feet. Wow. So wow. you're gonna march a lot. You're gonna march with a lot of heavy sack, with a heavy sack with a lot of gear. You get used to marching. So you do a lot of marches there. Um, you'll still be doing like small unit tactics, learning tactics. Um, you'll get to shoot some other weapons. Um, you'll go to some other regiments and do training, learn how to throw the grenade. You'll throw a grenade. You'll learn how to do, um, work with TNT, like dynamite. You'll do like the first stage of like demolition, how to use the fuse and all this stuff like that. But yeah, it's, um, you'll spend another three months, but you'll be going places. You'll be doing training. Um, maybe you'll go to another regiment. You'll be doing training over there. It really depends on what's going on at the regiment. It depends on your platoon leader, what he wants you guys to do. Like I said, nothing is like set in stone at this place. So like if your platoon leader is like, oh, no, like I don't want to do this. I want to do this. Well, you'll go over there and do that with another group or another another platoon will be somewhere completely different. So honestly, depends on them, your your platoon leader. Sounds a little bit like the way that uh, the Americans, certain American special forces are, where it's a little more 
relax just a little more. Now, is the French Foreign Legion technically a special forces unit? No, no. So, okay. So French Foreign Legion is not special forces. We do have the GCPs, the Group Commando Parachutists. They are special forces. And we have the GCM, the Group Commando Mountain. Um, the GCP is in Duzum Rep. So, so that's the Airborne Regiment. And the GCM is in the Mountain Regiment. We do have some special, other special um, uh, platoons, like the Dynops, like the Divers. Um, and we do have like the SID. And that's a next level up of training, like recon. It's basically re recon. Reconnaissance. They do some commando shit. But the French Foreign Legion is not basic training. I thought it kind of was too, you know, like, however, we do is definitely not like the U.S. military where you're, you get a safe space. Like, oh, like this guy's yelling at me. Like, I want to pull out my safety card. I don't know what. I've heard a lot of, a lot of stories like this now in 2021. You will not get anything like that. If you cry, like Legion is, is set up kind of like prison rules. So if you act like a bitch, you will be treated like a bitch. That's how it is. So like, as far as like training goes, like it's a lot, it's definitely a lot harder than um, like physically harder than the, uh, sorry, mentally harder than the U S military. It's not like it, it's not uh, for, you know, like Disney world over there. It's not like, that. so we'll, you know what I mean? It's, it's definitely a lot, um, a lot more things that happen to you over there. There is the a um, kind of a thought, a way of thinking from, you know, just the average American perspective that the French would consider the legionnaires more expendable than their average troops. Is that? That's true. Of course, the French Foreign Legion was started, uh, was founded because there was a lot of immigrants in, in France and they needed to get rid of them. And not only that, but they they had like all these colonial wars like why waste why spill french blood when we can use like you know uh immigrants or these guys who just like willing to die for france that's how it was started and you know that's kind of changed now but obviously if there was a war like there was a no scale fallout war yeah of course we will be sending first no doubt about it mm. um now there's not too many wars going on we're in Mali. We're still in Mali, but unfortunately, Mali will soon be over with as well. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we still do in deployments in Mali every year. Hmm. That's in Africa for the guys who don't know. It's a, it's a country in Africa. But yeah, other than that, you know, it's not like, oh, we, you know, we'll just send these guys out to die. Um, maybe if, if it is like that, they definitely don't. They're definitely not going to say it out loud like that. We'll just put it that way. Right. You know what I mean? But if there was a large scale war, um, definitely, I, I, I no doubt about it. That's what we're here for, um, and that's what would happen for sure. And we, we I, you know, a lot of these guys know that. We know that we're expendable. You have to know that when you join the Legion, like you're an immigrant, you're not French, yeah. so you're going to be treated, you know, differently. Unfortunately, that's how it is. You need to go into the Legion expecting that you're not going to have a lot of rights that you think you are. Like you're not a French citizen, so. You know, like they know that um, a lot of these guys too, they need a second chance. They know that they need the Legion. So you're not, it's not, it's not fun and games here. You're not going to be treated well all the time. And as it, it is what it is. You just have to have that mindset. Yeah. That's what you were saying when you and I were talking a little bit offline, just back and forth is that it's not really what everybody thinks. And it is. A it's not, it's not. Yeah. And no. um, you know, I've noticed something in the, couple of weeks I've been over here is a uh, week that I've been over here is that they, the French do have a way of, and you know, some would say it's an arrogance. I, I get it personally, but I, it's a way of treating non-French people that it comes off very arrogant. Um, that's yes. And I, okay. Yeah. Basically there is that arrogance in French and in France. However, I've seen that arrogant. I've seen the arrogance in, in uh, America as well. Oh, yeah. OK, I just I'll put it like that. However, uh, France, you know, I, I would I would compare France to like Americans where like France, like in America, no one wants to speak another language like, oh, we'll sp you're, you're in America, you speak English. Like France is the exact same way to where like, oh, uh, you're in France. They don't want to speak English with you. Yes. And the Legion, the French officers, they look down on you like really like it's it's in, it's crazy how like, yeah, it's. There's definitely that arrogance there. At least I'm, I know so many like situations in the French Foreign Legion where that happens. Just, they do look at you like a second class, 
like citizen. There, there definitely is an arrogance in France, no doubt about it. Yeah, there is for sure. I'm trying to speak as much French as I can while I'm over here. And mind you, I don't know French at all, really, except for a few phrases. But I've noticed even yeah. when I get in the taxi cab the other day, I got in, I said, uh, you know, pardon. Um, you know, <laughs> da, da, da. And then I was saying, I want to go. And that guy was like, I speak a little English. So I was like, thank gosh. I said, uh, can you take me to like Rue de Chapelle? And he like, look, and he's like, doesn't understand what I'm saying. I'm like, Rue de Chapelle. Yeah. And he fucking, he still, and he acts, and he's like, takes my phone and he looks at it, he goes, Oh, Rue de Chapelle. And I'm like, dude, I just <laughs> yeah, it like you got it, times, man, but I didn't have the Chapelle. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you know, yeah, with a th- something with a French accent, Americans were terrible at speaking. As far as the accent, we're terrible. We're the worst. Yeah. And yeah. you get made fun of a lot. Like, I've got made f- <laughs> fun of so much for speaking. Uh, I have a bad accent as well. But, anyways, you get like, you get made fun, fun of so much for speaking. Uh, <laughs> French with your, with your American accent. Um, I speak, you know, I've been in enough to where I speak a decent amount. I wouldn't know. I would not say it's fluent. So definitely not fluent yet, but it's, it's good. It's good. I can make my, I can, I can explain everything I want. I can get my point across. Um, but yeah, I'll start speaking French. Um, and they'll hear me like, okay, wow, this guy like speaks pretty good at French. And then they automatically want to start speaking English with me because they hear my American accent. <laughs> Like they just automatically, you know, I just continue speaking French. Like, no, I speak French. Like they think I'm trying or something, you know, like, oh, wow. You actually speak pretty good French. Oh, okay. Okay. Like, what are you doing here? And, you know, obviously I usually tell everyone that I'm, I'm in the French world. Like, oh my God, that's crazy. You know, but yeah, that's basically how, that's basically how it goes. I'm sure that's the way it was when I was in Israel, man. I, um, I spoke Hebrew. I learned it for two years. And as soon as I started speaking with them in Hebrew, they only would speak English with me. And it's like, yeah, it's crazy. It's weird. Yeah. It's the exact yeah. same way. Yeah. Exact but, same thing. Man. I'm sure when the French people, um, when you tell them that you're in the foreign legion, it's much like I was like, holy shit, that's fucking awesome. They're shocked. Yeah. yeah they're shocked. And then they immediately think like, Oh, what did you do? Like, like you know, like, what are you? <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know? no, no, no. <laughs> like, what are you, what are you hiding? Like, what are you doing here? Like, Oh, you're from America. Like, isn't America a good country? Like why join the Legion? You know, like, you, you get automatically bombarded with questions like that. Are they? I, bit- I met this. I, I met this one guy uh, in the bar from like Belgium or something. And like, he told me, he's like, oh man, you're in the Legion where I'm from. Like, you don't join the Legion unless you've shot someone or stabbed someone. <laughs> so like, there is this kind of like, um, uh, what do you, what would you call it? Like a uh, myth about the Legion. Like, you know, we're a bunch of criminals and stuff like that, but now that's not the case. It's not like it used to be back in the day. It used to be like that, but not anymore. It's not that bad anymore. There's a video going around YouTube of French foreign Legion hand to hand combat training where they're doing all this crazy CQC shit. Do they put an emphasis on hand to hand at all in the Legion? Um, uh, that, so that depends, man, that's a lot of like, that's a lot of variables. So that depends on your regiment. That depends on your company. That depends on your platoon as well. We do go through combat, close quarter combat courses. We do. You actually get graded on that. Mm -hmm. Um, that gets, uh, you get graded though by, uh, French instructors in the French army. Mm -hmm. Um, you will go with your platoon and the Legion, you will be commanded by your platoon leader but you will be graded on by French uh, instructors. And usually before you go on a mission, you need to be, you need to be tested on your combat, uh, your close quarter combat, um, or what do you call it, man? Uh, um, You know, door to door combat and and Uh, rooms and stuff like that. As far as hand to hand combat, that, that again, depends on your platoon leader. Um, uh, fortunately in the Legion, there's a lot of Eastern Europeans who, who join. And I mean, dude, 90% of your Eastern Europeans are all hand, are all to have all done some, some kind of combative sports yeah. more than anywhere, yeah. all any, anywhere else in the world, like your Ukrainians, your Moldovans, your Russians, man, these guys, they have a hard life and they grow up using their fists. So a lot of these guys are really experienced in MMA, boxing, jujitsu, judo, and you learn off them. So like if there's a day like, OK, in the morning, instead of doing like running or like physical training, we'll do like uh, boxing or something. 
they put those guys out. Unfortunately, you're not going to find like a lot of instructors who are going to spend time with you um, and, and train you. You must find that on your own time mm -hmm. after work. There are boxing courses, Krav Maga courses, jujitsu courses that you can take, um, but they don't emphasize. I, I, I don't. They don't emphasize as much as I would like, actually. But you do have time to to learn it on your own. You definitely have time in basic training. You'll do it a little bit, but not as much as uh, I would have liked to. You know, like you would have to kind of find that and do that on your own time. But it is possible. Now, what is life like once you've, you know, you've gotten your, uh, the Kepi, right? The yes, Kepi Blanc. Kepi Blanc. After you've gotten your Kepi Blanc, you've gone through your additional um, three months of, you know, ATC or whatever it is. Um, right. ATC. It's, uh, you're, you're a legionnaire now. You've gone through your training. Yes. What is life like on a day-to-day -day for the legionnaire? Okay, so um, uh, let's see. You'll get graded. You'll get a class, uh, a class placement, uh, a place in uh, your platoon um, at the end of your basic training. And, um, you know, it's like depends how many guys in your platoon. I forgot how many we were. We were in like 30. We had like 30, something, something like 30 guys. Obviously, there's guys that will, will go home. There's guys that will get injured um, and, and you will have less guys at the end of your your training. Um if you make the top 10, you can choose what regimen uh, you go to. Hmm. Usually, like, I'm not, not 100%. Nothing is, like, ever 100% the Legion. But you usually, you usually get, like, I want to go here. It'll be like, okay, you're in the top 10. I made nine. I made ninth in my oh. um, class. So I got to, I chose what I want to do, and I got, for example. Um, Good on you, man. Afterwards, yeah. Anyone after 10th placement, like it's, it's first come first serve. So like, let's say you're like number 13, there's a few regiments that interest you. And like, obviously uh, if like you want to go to a regiment with like engineers, something like more technically advanced, everyone wants to go to that regiment because it's a, the life is a little bit more relaxed. Um, or some of these guys, they don't really care about fucking fighting or like, going into combat. So yeah, there's just like, Oh, I just want a chill job. I just want to do my time, you know? And so a lot of these guys want to go to regiments like that. So there's not a lot of places where are there all places in, in any kind of, uh, any kind of, uh, military It's infantry. Like you're always going to have open places in infantry. So usually after, after behind, after the 10th place and, and, and up, you're basically going to get sent to, to infantry unless there's like a lot of openings and like one other regiment you're going to get sent to infantry man that is how it is every legionnaire is infantry first it is like that old marine mentality like every marine is a infantry or is like a fighter in the legion that's how it is you're going to go through infantry like if, if it's not like oh i want to do this first no you're going to go through infantry you're when you go to your combat regiment we'll just say like after basic training you'll get chosen like where you're going to go like okay you're going to go to this regiment it's infantry and you go and um, you start after you go to your combat regiment, you will continue to do training. It's another two months of advanced training um, when you get to your combat regiment and that there you have to graduate as well. You have to like there you'll get your um, uh, forage air, forage air, pardon. And like forage air is like that rope. I don't know if you know, it's like that rope that sits on the shoulder and every regiment has a different uh, color it means something like some war back that was fought back in the day. But yeah, so like you will continue to do training. You will still have two months of, um, it's called FCS, or you'll still have that shitty life. Like you'll wake up, you'll have to clean. You'll still have corporals and sergeants yelling at you. You have two months of that when you go to your combat regiment. So you, you finish your four months, you graduate, you go to your combat regiment, you will do on uh, another two months of uh, training over there as well. After two months, you'll actually go into your platoon and whatever company needs you uh, is going to take you. If you make a good grade, you're going to you might get into a better platoon uh, and a better company than some guy who's just a shithead and he makes, you know, really bad scores and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. You know, like um, it is better to make better score it is better to exceed and be motivated. You know what I mean? Now, to do better. Obviously, what? is life like after that process? Okay. Gotten in your yeah. So 
So life, when you're new, it's kind of, you know, you're on the bottom of the totem pole. Sure. You're going to be doing a lot of cleaning. You're going to be doing any kind of work that needs to be done at the company level. You're going to do. Mm. Um, if there's any kind of ceremonies, um, you're going to take part of it. Once you're a new legionnaire, you just, you really get abused and use and abuse. Honestly, it is what it is, but keep that in mind. That, that's how it is. That's how Legion is set up. I mean, unfortunately, it's not like the U.S. military where like everything's fair or they try to make everything fair um, or any kind of other, you know, like well-known military. I don't know um, anywhere else. But yeah, like you're going to get used. You're going to be doing a lot of cleaning. And when I say a lot of cleaning, it's like this thing called Corvée. Corvée. You'll be you'll clean your your building. Uh, You'll clean like your room. First off, you're a new guy. So you're going to clean the room. You sleep, depending on how the company is set up, like the rooms, uh, you'll sleep with like maybe four guys and maybe you'll sleep with six guys. You do not get your own room. Just go ahead and put that. And and every room, there's a corporal. The corporal is the head, is in charge of the room. The corporal is going to be telling what you do what you do uh, permanently. Like the corporal is like, hey, I, I need this clean. You're going to do that. Hey, you clean this. You're going to have to do that. You're always going to have a corporal telling you what to do. Um, the corporal is like the first grade of like some kind of power is the first rank of power. Um, and the corporal is just like, those guys are the ones that are running the section. Uh, they run the day-to-day life. So you're going to be doing a lot of cleaning. Like I said, um, um, you're going to be doing any kind of work that needs to be done. You're going to be doing a lot of, um, like training to make sure that you're up to training. You're going to be breaking down weapons, you're going to be studying again, once again, topography, stuff like that, uh, first aid, combat first aid and stuff like that. They're going to keep you on your toes. If you don't know like what's going on, if you get lost, you're going to get smoked. Mm. So get prepared. If you're going to be a shithead, if you're going to talk back, get prepared to be smoked, man. Get prepared to be hey. So um, that's what it is. Like basic day to life, you wake up, um, you'll do PT in the morning. Uh, you do PT usually every day. You'll run. CrossFit, something like that. You finish that. If there's any work that needs to be done in the company, you'll be doing it. Maybe there's some kind of training that we'll be doing that day in the platoon. Oh, like today we're going to do, we're going to break down the, the 50 cal. So like you take all the new guys out there, you watch them, you see like, you know, what's going on. Okay. Like what are the names of the, the parts, stuff like that. You'll eat at noon at the chow hall. Um, and you continue the training for the day. If there is anything Maybe there's nothing going on. If there's just work on the company as a new legionnaire, you're going to be doing everything. You're going to be touching everything, hands on everything, uh, get prepared, like no relaxation for like the first year, be prepared to be doing a lot of, of bullshit work. Actually, like it is what it is. That's just how the legion set up. It's not special forces. So like the life of special forces is really relaxed. You are infantry, you like the basic infantry. So you're going to be doing a lot of bullshit. So get used to it. <laughs> Because that's what happens. That's at least the first year. Well, I mean, it, it honestly is probably for the best because, you know, it takes, they say, 10,000 hours to master anything. And they, they want to make sure that you're good at what you're doing. Right. So uh, that's true. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I got you get you're going to get so tired of the cleaning, man. Like they're super <laughs> big about that. You, you'll be going everywhere, scrubbing everything. Yeah, it gets a little like ridiculous. But just just know, like you are in the French Foreign Legion. So is what it is. Well, you're going to be really good at cleaning. So if you ever come home and you need to clean something, you'll be a master. Yeah, you will be a master. of. Yeah, I, yeah for sure. You will really, you guys will be really good at cleaning. Oh my God, let me tell you. After your first year, uh, things relax a little bit more. Are yes. you able to live off base, things like that? Uh, okay, so your first year, yes, you've put in a little bit of time Okay, they got a kind of a feel for you, like they know how you work, who you are, um, you know, what kind of personality you have. And then on top of that, there's going to be other new guys coming in. Depending on your platoon, these guys, if, if these guys are staying in, are they going to reenlist? Are they getting out? It depends on how many guys, new guys are coming in. So maybe you'll be in for like two years. And unfortunately, there's nobody new coming in. Yeah. Or maybe you're in a platoon where there's a lot of new guys coming in like every year. So maybe after you have you put in your year, there's new guys. And so you're not going to be tapping 
uh, the cleaning like every day. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. That depends. Um, as far as leaving off base, you are not allowed to live off base on after until your first contract. You have to complete five years in order for you to live off base. Everyone lives on base, as a matter of fact. Uh, for your first five years, uh, everyone lives on base. You don't have the right to live off base. Do people do it? Yes. Do you, you can get an apartment if you want. If they catch you, you will get in trouble for it. Hmm. You won't get, when I say get in trouble, like the system, there is no like UCMJ for the Americans. I know like we're used to the uniform code of military justice. They don't have anything like that. Like there is no like, um, like JAG. Uh, there's no like system of like anything like that. If you get in trouble, um, you will get, you will go to jail. Okay. Hmm. The jail is a, is like, it's, it's on base. It's Legion jail. It's not like French jail. It's there's um, a group of guys who run it. They're all enlisted. And like, let's say you get caught having a car. You're not allowed to have a car until you're a corporal with three years of service. So like, let's say you're a, a private first class, basically a premier class, and they catch you with a car. Well, for that, you're going to get 20 days of jail. And so you'll go to the jail You'll live there for 20 days, but all you do is, is clean. You'll literally be doing yard work for the regiment. And like it's, 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 tr- it's, it's relaxed. Like no one's going to fuck with you over there. Don't like, it's not like jail, like in America, like it's the, it's just a jail on base. And like, we say that you're not a, you're not even a real legionnaire unless you've done jail. Uh, so there's that. Uh, now, yeah. what is it like living in the Legion? I mean, you said these days it's not like there's wars going on in Africa and the Middle East uh, all the time. You guys do deploy to Mali, um, but you don't get as much combat experience at the moment as some guys yeah. like. Yeah, that's true, man. Good point. So um, there was some guys that went into Iraq last year. Um uh that was cool that was a cool mission for the guys that were there if the guys that were there know what i'm talking about uh they actually the guys that were there they were doing close force protection so it was a really cool mission for them um as far as other than that it's molly um and other than molly man you know unless you're in like gcp or like gcm the special forces of the legion you aren't going to be doing like any cool missions now, unfortunately, because there's literally nothing going on. It's, it's kind of stagnant. And uh, you know, a lot of people are not fed up with that. So you're going to have a lot of guys getting out after five years. Um, You just, it's like peacetime military, man. You know, like you're just going to be training. You, you train, you stay sharp. You, you, you do physical, you, you work out, you exercise and you wait for a war. Other than that, there are missions that like peacekeeping missions, you might be work with the UN. I, you know, I don't know if you remember the, um, the ship that blew up in um, Lebanon, for example. Yeah. That big ship, I forgot exactly what happened. There was like fertilizer. Well, anyways, there was a, a, a platoon that got sent over there hmm. uh, to help take care of that. It was like a peacekeeping mission, obviously, because France is allies with Lebanon. Um, I have some friends that, go, that went into Central Africa. Um, that central, unfortunately, they weren't doing anything combat related. There is combat going in Central Africa. Wagner Group is actually like uh, over there right now, but mm-hmm. they were over there just like kind of peacekeeping. They they trained the um, uh, I don't know the Central African military over there. You know, they did training with them. They they try to keep them updated on their training and stuff like that. So you you might not go into a combat mission, but you will go to different countries and be doing different kinds of training with, uh, with, you know, with NATO or partners with France and stuff like that. But yeah, as far as combat, man, there's not much going on right now. And Mali, unfortunately, unless you're special forces, um, there is not really anything you, you know, there's not a lot of combat. Uh, there's just, you w- obviously have to re- worry about all the time over there is IEDs. Mm-hmm. That's a big thing right now. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, you know, if you're really not special forces, there's not many cool combat related uh, missions right now. It's funny you bring up Lebanon because uh, you can really tell that the French left their footprint there. You know, I, I obviously speak uh, Syrian Arabic, which is really close to Lebanese Arabic. It's all in the Levant. And over in Lebanon, they'll still say uh, bonjour, merci, things like that. And it's uh, it's really cool to see how the French really, really, really left their footprint there. Even when I was in Thailand, uh, I was in Bangkok. 
And I was actually staying right next to a French compound. I don't know exactly what it was, but you could see the big French flag with the gate. Um, and, you know, France and the Foreign Legion specifically, I think, really were so active and involved throughout the whole world. And, you know, you say there's no combat now, but I have the feeling that might start to change over the next uh, year or two coming along. But that's just a feeling I get. Yeah, you know, you have guys that are, are have joined the Legion for combat, so, you know, it's good for them. I did forget to mention um, we have a regiment in uh, French Guyana. I don't know if, you know, that's a country in South America. And they're, they're doing active missions all the time. It's huh. not always combat, but they're real missions. Uh, they're looking for um, uh, gold, gold traffickers, uh, drug traffickers. Um, they do like these guys, they mine gold in the jungle, and that's illegal. Uh, so these guys are actively, um, you know, hunting for them. Uh, guys who do that all the time over there. Uh, Deforestation is a big deal. So you're gonna you and if you go to French Guyane, um, good luck with that. Like the jungle is not my thing. I would never want to go there. I have done the jungle commando course um, in Martinique, which is a Caribbean uh, French um, French French used to colonize as an island in the Caribbean. Um, it was three weeks. It's not my thing. I would never do anything to do. I have nothing. Want nothing to do with the jungle. That's <laughs> For, for that you guys are crazy. Whoever goes to the jungle, yeah, that's not for me. But anyways, anyways, like I said, there's active missions going over there all the time. If you chose to go to, if you choose to go to French Guyane, there are missions going on over there for sure. That's about it. Sam, why did you join the French Foreign Legion? I mean, were you looking for combat or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wanted to continue my life as a, a soldier. Uh, like I love the U.S. military. Unfortunately, I just did some shit that got me. That got me in trouble and I'm not allowed to re-enlist. And otherwise, I, I would still be in the U.S. military, honestly. Like, I have no plan of getting out. So I joined the French Foreign Legion just to continue my life uh, as a soldier. Yes, for combat, for, you know, to travel, love to travel for the experience. And um, not, nothing to do with the French passport, you know. Like, I am American. Like, you know, it's nothing to do, like, with anything like that. It was for more for, you know, training and combat and just you know, just to, uh, just to be that kind of combative kind of guy and do things like that, you know? All-American badass, bro. And I sympathize with you with uh, what happened, you know, whatever happened with you in the, in the military. I, uh, I'll leave it at that, but I can personally sympathize with that as well. Um, now, what have you given any thought what you want to do kind of after you get out? Do you want to re-up? Yes. Stay in? I, I will keep it vague. But um, I want to do contracting, military contracting after get out, because that's, you know, military is something that is all I know, and I'm good at it. So um, I will definitely go into the private, the PMC career field, definitely straight up. Well, we'll, um, we'll do everything we can once you do get out. I mean, obviously, we've got a number of contacts in that world as well, specifically DJ as our um, tactical liaison here, and he does that as well. So I'm sure you won't need any help, uh, just given your background now, but anything you ever need, we can help you out. We'd be glad to as well. Um, but man, it's been such a fucking pleasure talking to you, dude. You seem like a really cool level headed down to earth guy. And I mean, thank you so much for coming on, talking to us. I hope that at some point we can kind of get you back on again. I would ask anyone with questions about the Legion questions about life, you know, as a legionnaire, how to get in and this and that guys throw it in the comments below. Um, we can always do a round two with Sam and, you know, address those specific questions given, you know, given, um, Sam's, you know, schedule and willingness to come back on and everything like that. But, you know, for now, man, I mean, this is more information that I think is really out there online period about the Legion. This is really, you've given us such a great overview. So thank you so much, dude. Yeah, man, no problem. Uh, once again, thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. So, uh, guys, until next time, I want you to remember that you are your first and last line of defense. And again, if there's anything you want to know specifically, plop it in the comments below. Gutterfightingsecrets at gmail.com. If you have any more specific questions uh, for Sam that maybe you don't want to throw in the comments, give us an email and we'll discreetly try to get in touch and uh, get your question answered if it's if it's appropriate or, or whatnot. So until next time, we will see you in the next uh, program. And we look forward to, uh, at some point, hopefully getting Sam back on the podcast. But for now, Sam, I will say au revoir, my friend. 
Okay, man. <laughs> Until next time. A la prochaine. Uh, I'll say. Until next time, man.